In this tutorial, we will enter a split expense transaction. In GNU Cash, a split transaction is used when a single transaction involves multiple accounts. Instead of just transferring money between two accounts in the chart of accounts, a split transaction allows you to divide the amount across several accounts. For example, expense breakdowns. If you have more than one item on a receipt, you can split the transaction to allocate costs to separate expense accounts. Sales income. If you have a single payment from a customer that you want to split between the income sales account and the sales tax account. Payroll distribution. Entering payroll in GNU Cash is typically considered a split transaction because it involves multiple accounts in a chart of accounts. Splitting transactions ensures your financial reports reflect the actual breakdown of your income and expenses. Depending on which type of splits you're entering, there will be slight differences. In this tutorial, we will cover how to enter a split expense transaction. For example, here I have a lump sum expense receipt for business supplies purchased for $70 from Max Office Supplies. It contains two different transactions that I want to record in two different accounts in the chart of accounts. A split transaction allows you to break down the transaction while keeping it as a single transaction. Let's begin. Open up the checking account register by double clicking on the checking account. Enter the date of the transaction if it's different from the default date. In the num field, enter a check number or transaction number if it applies. In the description field, enter a description that best describes the transaction. In this example, I will enter the vendor max office supplies. When you first enter it, you bypass the transfer field and go directly to the withdrawal field and enter the full amount of the transaction. To activate the split, select Show Splits on the toolbar. Activating the split adds two additional rows to the transaction. In the first row, the system automatically entered the checking account in the transfer field and the full amount of the transaction in the withdrawal field. And on the second row, $70 was automatically entered in the deposit field. This is where you will start entering the first transaction on your list. From this point on and until every part of your transaction has been entered, do not use the enter key on your keyboard. Doing so will throw the transaction off and you'll have to start over. In the action field, you can click inside the text box to display the various options you have for describing the type of transaction you're entering. This field is optional. In the memo field, enter the description of the first transaction on your list. Here's where I will enter three cartons of copy paper. In the transfer field, select the account that you want to assign to this transaction. In this example, the three cartons of copy paper will be considered an office supply expense. Here's where I would select the office supplies expense account. In the deposit field, here's where the full amount of the transaction was automatically entered. You have to edit that amount to reflect the actual amount of this transaction. Here's where I will enter $45. Using the tab key on your keyboard, tab to the end of the row. Tabbing to the end of the row will add an additional row for entering your next transaction. Here's where I will enter the last transaction on my receipt, shipping envelopes. In the transfer field, I will select the account I will assign this transaction to, postage and delivery. In the deposit field, the system automatically updates the balance you have left to apply to the next transaction. And since this is my last transaction and the $25 is correct, I can select Enter on the toolbar to record the transaction and save to save the changes. Now, if everything was entered correctly on the very last row of the split transaction, 
you should see the full amount of the transaction listed in the withdrawal field. Now you can hide and unhide a split transaction. First make sure the transaction is selected by clicking on the transaction to highlight it and then select show splits on the toolbar and do the same to unhide it. Now when you go back to the main account screen you should see the transactions you just entered listed in the chart of accounts. Here I can see the three accounts involved in my split transaction. The checking account, the office supply account, and the postage and delivery account. And that's it. Now you know how to enter a split transaction that involves three or more accounts in the chart of accounts.